Kelly Russell Agadon is an award-winning modern poet. Her work is largely autobiographical, exploring love, loss, poetry, and life in the Pacific Northwest. Her poems feel pensive and personal, yet readers feel a connection through creative word choice and universal themes. She has released three collections of poetry, her first in 2003. Her collection released in 2010, titled Letters from the Emily Dickinson Room, was the winner of the White Pine Poetry Prize, winner of Forward Magazine's Book of the Year Prize in Poetry, and a finalist for the Washington State Book Award. Agadon has also released Small Knots, Hourglass Museum, bestseller The Daily Poet, Day-by-Day -day Prompts for Your Writing Practice, and co-edited Fire on Her Tongue, an anthology of contemporary women's poetry. Agadon was born in 1969 in the Seattle, Washington area. By the time she was eight years old, she was writing short stories. She entered the University of Washington as a fiction writer and took a poetry class from poet and professor Linda Beards. Beards suggested to Agadon that she submit a poem for the university journal and it was accepted, causing her to consider poetry instead of fiction. After completing her degree at the University of Washington, she worked at a corporate job for a few years, but quickly realized she was unfulfilled. Agadon then earned her Master of Fine Arts at Pacific Lutheran University and relocated to Kingston, Washington, a town with a population of about 2,000 people. Since then, Agadon has found success as not only a poet, but an editor. She was the editor-in-chief of Seattle journal Crab Creek Review from 2008 to 2014. She is also a book cover designer, founder of a retreat for female poets, member of nonprofit Seattle Seven Writers, and publisher. She co-founded Two Sylvia's Press along with Annette Spaulding Convy, inspired by the poetic talent of Sylvia Plath and the publishing and editorial talent of Sylvia Beach. Agadon and Spaulding Convy established it so they could publish Fire on Her Tongue as an ebook because they were unhappy that poetry anthologies were not accessible on e-readers. Through Two Sylvia's Press, Agadon began the Russell Prize, awarded to a poet who has yet to be published. Agadon has stated that she is inspired to include humor in her poetry because of her father's dry humor she experienced growing up. He had to have a leg amputated later in life and use jokes to get through it. She said, not everyone got his humor, but I loved it. And I think that's why when I write, I like mixing humor with sadness or humor with darker material, because I think my family has always used humor to get through tough times. If my dad could still make jokes given all he had to go through, then there's always a way to add a little humor into my life. She revealed that many of her poems are based on the death of her father because she finds solace in writing about difficult subjects. She is also heavily influenced by the poetry of Sylvia Plath, saying, I'd have to say my all-time favorite poet is Sylvia Plath. Her work always inspires and impresses me every time I read it. Agadon's work largely features two contrasting ideas that she brings together using conceits and other literary devices. In Agadon's poem, Believing Anagrams, she unites the ideas of death and poetry using innovative anagrams, and readers feel involved and connected to the poem while deciphering the sentences. Believing Anagrams. After being asked why I write so many poems about death and poetry, there's real fun in funeral and in the pearly gates the pages relate. You know, I fall prey to poetry, have hated death. All my life literature has been my ritual, ritual tree. Shakespeare with his her speak, Pablo Neruda, my adorable pun. So when I write about death and poetry, it's donated therapy where I converse with Emily Dickinson, my inky misled icon. And when my dream songs are demons rags, I dust my manuscript in a manic spurt, hoping the reader will reread because I want the world to pray for poets because we are only a story of paper. Thanks so much for coming out today. Another poem featuring an extended metaphor is Natural History Lesson on a Hike to God's Point, in which Agadon includes details of living in a rather isolated area 
and uses a metaphor to imply that nature is unappreciated. It's called <clears throat> Natural History Lesson on a Hike to God's Point. It's not summer, but autumn running its bony fingers up my legs and the leaves falling on my hair, a blessed bee crown for the pagan goddess I didn't want to become. Today, I would much rather be indoors, shopping sacks for a long wool dress, Donna Karen tights and forest green. But nature has played its spirituality card. So I slip beneath a maple tree and try to believe my life has meaning. Sparrows sing while I consider shades of blush, red in doubt, rays in hell, anxiety in champagne pink. Sometimes I want not just contentment, but the blue box of sky it arrived in, heaven city nail polish, diamond rosary wrapped around my cell phone. I'm connected without sacrifice. I view the field without touching my feet in the dew-filled wildflowers below. But where is my life? I wander through it in new leather boots, crushing lady slippers in my path. When I come to a bear munching on blackberries to fatten up for winter, I pause. We see each other like two shoppers at the same sale rack, <laughs> each rummaging through, trying to find what we think we need to fill us up. Her latest book, Hourglass Museum, is driven by the idea that creativity moves us all forward in life. The book combines art and poetry and includes references to Andy Warhol, Frida Kahlo, and Joseph Cornell. She explores the fear that drives the lives of poets and artists and letting go of it in Self-Portrait with Reader. Self-Portrait with Reader. To create is not enough. We must live with our hearts in our hands like Mary. We must hold the blood red heart and not be disappointed when others look away. This is the simplest way to say yes, to say, I am here giving you what I'm afraid will scare you, yet I am holding it in my palms. Disappear if you have to. Disappear into the cracks of the world and call it an earthquake. Fear shakes itself on us and we decide how much we can take. Reader, I want to tell you the hearts we hold will continue beating long after we leave here. Be the statue on the dashboard traveling hopefully. Even if what you hold drips onto the floorboard, even if you have no idea where to go. Agadon's decades of experience writing and publishing have motivated her to foster a love of reading and writing in people of all ages. Her passion for writing is palpable in her poems, which have made a lasting impact in the poetry world. Readers have connected with her poems because of her relatability and flowing language. Agadon is an example that leaving behind a conventional job in life can be daunting, but doing what you love is worth it. You know, they always talk about this, the butterfly and then creates a big storm, you know, on the other side of the world. It's that idea of connecting with one person and somehow um, my work is having some sort of positive effect in the world. And even if it's one person, I never discount that because I'm not about, oh my God, I write poetry. I'm not about quantity, I'm about quality. So for me, it's always been much more of a quality versus quantity. And so if one person or two people write to me and say, you know, I found your poem in this little journal and it meant a lot, to me that uh, means so much more than, I don't know, something bigger where I'm, I'm not really hearing the voice of another person.